quorum, right? Uh, let me just shake your head. <laughs> yes, we have quorum. Yeah, and, and uh, so if I could uh, call the meeting to order, and, uh, and then also I'll write, go right into anybody like to approve the uh, the agenda as it is. Um, I I was hoping to add uh, new business. Add what? New business. New business. Oh, okay. Thank you. We'll put that down near the bottom here. And anything else, anybody? Can you say something? Emily, did you have your hand up? No. Okay. It was to approve the, the okay. agenda. So who made the first motion? To agenda, uh, Emily did, and I would like to second that. There, Libby. Thank you, Libby. Okay. Uh, anyone today have a declaration of uh, pecuniary interest? No one. No one today. Uh, approval of the minutes we uh, of the last meeting. Anyone would like to uh, have anything to say on that, or would you like to make a motion, please, to approve the minutes of the last meeting? I'm and Libby's making a motion, and I can second that, right? So, okay, so with that approval, we'll go right into business, and, uh, and we're going to go right into the municipal update with uh, Ben. Ben, yeah. take it away. <clears throat> Thanks, Councillor Anderson. I, um, I'm going to hand it off to Caroline Birch. I have a couple things uh, of as well, but uh, I'll hand it off to our, uh, we're really fortunate to have Caroline. She's, um, she's our, our summer student through uh, the next four months while well, we're already a month in now. Um, uh, we were able to get some, some really good funding options to make this happen. And uh, every day she's um, blowing expectations out of the water. So um, she's got Quite a bit to tell you guys about and I think you'll be really impressed with some of the summer stuff we've got going on. So go ahead okay. Caroline. Thank you Ben. Um, hi everyone it's nice to meet you. I'm Caroline. Um, I'm just gonna kind of give you a quick rundown about some projects uh, Ben and I have been working on. Um, my internet's a little bit spotty so if you can't hear me please let me know and I'll, I'll repeat myself. Um, I guess the first thing I'll talk about uh, was the first project we worked on, which was the updating of the Brighton Online Business Guide. Um, we reached out to businesses and asked for more current information and updated that and really wanted to make sure that that was a resource that was available for the community, uh, especially because we were in lockdown when I started. Uh, so just to make sure that we had a place where people could go to get the most recent information about businesses and Ben has been running analytics on the website. Um, and we've actually seen a huge uptick in people who are visiting that site, which is awesome. It means it's getting used and, and people are accessing uh, the services that business have uh, during lockdown. Uh, kind of the big focus I've had um, working with Ben has been uh, the social media. So just some general stuff I've been working on through there has been the addition of a link tree. Uh, if you don't know what a link tree is, it's just a link that you can add more links to. Um, and that just makes it really easy for us to share uh, links with important information to people who are on our Instagram because you can't copy and paste uh, links and that are clickable in the text. So it's just really seamless. Um, it makes it easier for people to get information that they need. Um, I've also been creating templates for a more uniform look and those are used for when Ben or I send out updates. Um, so last night you guys might have seen it about the low water condition. That was one of our templates we set out um, and it's just a very seamless thing that we can do it's kind of like one two three and uh, it's out so really fast really easy um the other thing we've been working on has been promoting user generated content um so that means having people tag us in their pictures if they're coming to brighton uh, to visit uh, it's good to get them involved on social media. Um, so it makes my job easier because I don't have to go and take the pictures, but it also gives a, a different perspective of Brighton through people who are visiting, uh, which is awesome. And then just kind of generally I'm stockpiling content for future use. So stuff we can't post in lockdown, um, but will be useful later. I'm just kind of scheduling that for a later date. 
Um, more actively, I'm working on six social media campaigns, um, and I'll just kind of give you a rundown if you haven't seen them. Uh, the first one is a new business spotlight. I've been able to do one so far, um, just because I figured that these new businesses are very busy, but I have three scheduled uh, to go up sometime during the summer. Uh, so the first one was with Melanie from Firing Time, the new pottery place on the main street, and that went over really well. It got 500 people saw it, uh, engaged with it, which was awesome. It was really positive. And she reached out to me and just uh, said thank you uh, because she got so much positive uh, interaction from the community. Um, so that was awesome. Um, and then we had some local business spotlights. So I've just been focusing on businesses who've had to close uh, during the lockdown and offer curbside pickup. So that just looks like a picture of a product that they have, giving a little blurb about the business and then whatever um, you know, COVID protocols that they have um, and what you can find in the business. Uh, Canada Takeout Days is something I run Wednesday. Uh, Takeout Canada is a national campaign that just kind of promotes um, dining locally and getting takeout and supporting local restaurants, which have been obviously very hard hit due to the lockdowns. Um, so every Wednesday, I feature a dish or a restaurant in Brighton uh, just to give people an idea of what's out there, what they can get for takeout. And actually, last night, um, the national... Uh, Instagram account reached out and saw the post I did last night and commented on it, which was awesome because they have 20,000 followers. And it means that what we're doing on our Instagram page is being seen, um, you know, nationally across Canada, which is pretty cool. Um, another thing I've been doing is longer themed posts. The idea behind this is just to get people uh, give some ideas of what you can do uh, in lockdown while still supporting businesses. So you might have seen the long weekend one. Um, it was a picture of an ice cream from Tin Roof uh, from Megan, and it was shared pretty widely across um, the municipality. So I call it the bang for your buck post because I'm able to highlight a lot of businesses in one post and it gets a lot of um, shares and interactions and people really seem to um, gravitate towards the type of posts. I haven't been able to do a lot of them just because um, a, nothing's really open and B, there's only kind of been like two major events since I started working, but I do have plans to do um, one every week uh, for the summer. I've been able to kind of scrape together enough content uh, and categorize it. So it's kind of meaningful in those posts. Um, we've had two kind of exciting partnerships. Um, we're working with the Cardington Farmers Market. Ben was really adamant about getting those them highlighted on our social media. So Fridays, I run the Farmers Market feature. So I pick a product that's going to be at the market that week. I read a little blurb and then about how it's made or grown. And then the idea is to give people a sneak peek about what's going to be at the market, maybe inspire them to, to make the trip on Sunday. Um, we've also had um, some interest from producers who are making, um, like who are bringing produce to the market to have uh, recipes featured. So that'll start in June. Um, I'll be doing some features on produce and then sharing recipes that you can make uh, with the produce. Um, we've also had interest from the farmers about getting helper resources to up their social media, uh, their personal social media. So Ben and I have reached out to the Bay of Quinney Regional Marketing Board and we're hoping to put something together, um, just like a resource package or maybe a little webinar, um, just to help address some of the needs that they, they want addressed on their social media. Um, the other kind of exciting partnership we are looking forward to it begins in June with the Brighton Digital Archives. Uh, we've partnered with them and we're going to be using some of their photographs um, and we're going to be running a town trivia. So the idea behind that is we'll be posting a picture with a question on the municipal page and then they'll be posting a picture with uh, the same picture with the answer and people can learn more about uh, the picture on their page. And we think that, you know, it's not necessarily economic development. We're not promoting businesses, but it's something fun. It's something engaging. It's something different. So we're really looking forward to uh, seeing how that goes over uh, starting in June. So kind of with all of those six social media campaigns, I've been able to highlight 35 businesses in just under a month, um, and I have 15 scheduled so far. I haven't been able to reach out to everyone just because I want to keep the content really current. I don't want to, you know, reach out now and then be posting in August and they don't have uh, the thing I've about. So I try to keep it very uh, current. And the goal is to have each business feature at least twice once with their own kind of spotlight, their own picture, and then once being mentioned in a longer post, um, like I mentioned before. So that's all well and good. We've got a lot of uh, pictures, you know, that's exciting. Um, but I think what's really interesting, I'm just going to share my screen with everyone. Um, this is some of the statistics I've pulled from both of our um, social media accounts. So the white here is Facebook. 
Um, so over the past month, we've had 22,000 people uh, being reached with our posts, which is huge. Um, and I will say that it's due to one post, but I'm gonna get to that and why it's important in a second. Um, also over the past month, we've had over 5,000 people engage with our content, which means liking, sharing, or commenting, which is awesome. That means people are connecting with the content we're putting out. Um, and that drives uh, the page followers over here, um, which means 46 people have joined our Facebook and are now getting updates and information about um, Brighton that they wouldn't have gotten before. Um, this black screen over here is our Instagram insights. Um, and it's a similar story on Instagram. We've been able to reach about 500 accounts, which is up 54% um, from last month. And our content interactions have gone through the roof um, or up 945%. Um, which is awesome. Again, people are identifying with what we're posting and they're really uh, latching on and engaging with it. Our followers is a little bit lower on Instagram, but Instagram is one of the harder platforms to grow on. Um, so that's to be expected. Um, yeah, here are some of our top performers. Just, I thought you guys might wanna see some of these. Um, this first one is a farmer's market feature. It reached 1300 people. Um, this is the long weekend post um, I was talking about earlier, 2000 people reached on this one. And then kind of our shining star was this 401 ramp closure that reached uh, 18,000 people and was shared over 200 times, which was wild. Our whole Facebook feed was just this. Um, and what was really incredible about this was this was the first time we used the templates I used. So having that shared so widely and so many times was awesome because that gets the branding and um, that kind of template out and people know it's from the municipality of Brighton. So that's awesome. Um, and then over here on the black screen, again, I have the uh, Instagram top performers. So I am posting the same things on Instagram and Facebook, but because the demographics are a little bit different on each of the sites, um, they get different interactions. Um, so the top post for Instagram has been the Canada takeout and letting people know that we were going to be partaking in that. Um, so that's kind of it for social media actively that I'm actively working on. Um, but I have a few more campaigns for shopping locally um, I'll speak to. This one, Ben really wanted me to do um, a dining locally campaign. So I've come up with the Bites of Brighton um, and we're hoping that this, we can roll this out July 1st. Um, so what this is, it's kind of like a food and photo contest. Um, so people will dine locally at three different Brighton eateries. They'll take a picture of their dining experience. Uh, it could be their takeout box, their plate, their view from the patio. Um, whatever that may look like, and then they'll upload it to um, our website. And then if they do it three different times at three different restaurants, that means they get one entry into the draw to win some prizes. Uh, and the social media tie-in and kind of user-generated content is that we'll be asking for permission when they upload their picture. Um, and then that will allow us to post them on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and I think that's going to create a lot of engagement in terms of, you know, not only people seeing all the different um, foods that are offered in Brighton from different perspectives of users, but also the fact that restaurants are going to see all this love for their food um, on, on our social media, which is uh, awesome. I think that's, it's going to be a really positive thing uh, for the community. Um, the other shop local campaign we talked about um, has been promoting businesses without drawing people. So kind of walking that fine line where we want to keep the community safe and not necessarily attract so many people um, because we are still in COVID, but while it's still, you know, actively promoting. And Ben and I talked about, you know, we don't want to overlap the two campaigns. That gets confusing. There's a loyalty program for shopping and then there's a loyalty program for eating. We didn't want to do that. So we've come up with this idea of um, kind of having signage in really key places of the community where we're getting a lot of traffic. Um, so this one's kind of the first one we're proposing. This is a really poorly photoshopped um, version I did just for some visual interest. No, it won't necessarily go there, but um, this is just the idea we had. So the first place we were thinking was Presque Hill Park, just outside by Polywogs. Um, that way we're getting to to the park, um, the one that comes along Lakeshore and then the one that comes along Ontario. Uh, we think that this kind of graphic I've come up with is the most visually impactful. These are pictures that are of or taken by local businesses. So it's all very local and we've tried to keep it to things you can only get in Brighton. Um, and there's a social media kind of tie-in. If you visit any of the three links that are at the bottom, Facebook, Instagram, or the website, these pictures are all posted. Um, so if you're 
engaged with a photo here I'll actually just go here if you're engaged with a photo um, you can go to our Instagram and that photo will be there or scheduled to be there and uh, you can actually just scroll down and figure out um, what that business is and then where it is and there's probably going to be a spotlight about it and a little bit uh, more about where you can find it in Brighton so the idea there is you know people are going to be coming to the park they're going to be coming to Brighton why not just make them aware of what is here without actively drawing them uh, to Brighton from other areas. Uh, and then we kind of talked about maybe if this goes well, um, other spots downtown, like the uh, main park, Memorial Park, or um, rescaling this into postcards um, that we could distribute um, or people could pick up and take away um, if they needed more information. So that's kind of what I've been working on over the past month. Um, I know Ben wanted to get some feedback on this graphic specifically. I wasn't sure if it was the location of the graphic or if it was the um, the, pl the placement, um, but I'll, I'll maybe hand it off to Ben or open it up for some feedback on, on what I've been doing. Yeah, um, I'll just add to the uh, signage idea um, there's the DBIA signs um, that have the maps at the Tim Hortons parking lot and then the, um, the Memorial uh, Park that we could get smaller versions of these and even just utilize one side, side of those signs for these, for these graphics uh, with the DBIA's permission if, if Megan slash Emily um, can take something like that, that type of proposal back to your uh, June meeting and we can do that and get those up before uh, peak season starts here in late uh, late June. Um, Willow can whip these up rather quickly but um, but yeah that that's kind of what we've got Caroline going on thus far. Um, as you can see it's jam-packed program for her. I'm really happy to say as a manager I don't think she's ever really bored or twiddling her thumbs or anything like that. Obviously, it's a pretty heavy emphasis on digital media. Um, I'm still taking the reins on radio and all our print uh, opportunities, as well as the Brighton Beacon. Um, we've got that. We just had a spring issue. We're working now on a on another issue. So, uh, so that's you know very high profile print marketing for our community, as well as what the chamber's working on with their map uh, program. So. Um, so yeah, like I just can't say enough about the start of the first month of Caroline's uh, um, uh, role with us. And uh, if anyone has any questions about any of this stuff, you can either direct them at Caroline or myself, and then I can do my update or I can just kind of continue on and we can just have a big discussion after whatever you guys think you want, Ron or Libby. I think if, if anything's fresh, we should maybe just talk about it briefly now too because sometimes things get slid off to the side later so that's an excellent presentation and uh, that's a lot of work in one month I uh, have you talked to the Chamber of Commerce at all <laughs> I haven't no <laughs> uh, I see Laura, Laura I see Laura's not here but um you know you're doing a lot of a uh, lot of I guess you be, could be crossing paths a little bit on some things, but that doesn't hurt. It's all good. Uh, the promotion for the community is huge. When you add this to what those other groups, the DBIA and Chamber are doing, it's it's, uh, it's huge. And it's going to be quite impactful when, as we come out of this uh, COVID <laughs> and the kids are out of school. So uh, it'll, uh, you've done a great job, uh you asked about the sign. Um, it, it probably looks busy uh, to be a sign that's beside the road, but it's very impactful with that shop local and the Brighton uh, aspect of it. And so I think it's sort of important to get, get it out to uh, people to understand what is on that sign or what, see what is on that sign, because it takes a minute to look at it. And then it starts to really sink in where your mind was when you put that together. So um, it's it's excellent. It's just a sign like that can be just too busy sometimes in the wrong place, I guess. I think the corner where you down by the park, the idea is if we can, if you can ever, let's say in a normal situation, if you can ever drag people out of that park to go, go for dinner or go for uh, shopping in town, um, 
uh, this is one more thing to num one more way to do it. But uh, no, good job. But anyone else have anything they want to add to that? Any? Yeah, um, I do. I think it's great as well. Um, you've done an awful lot of work with social media, which is uh, which is super. That's that's where our trends will be hopefully going. Uh, the one question I have about this is: Is it um, who is your market? Is, is it shop local meant for like local people here to encourage them to shop here rather than go somewhere else, or is it for our our visitors? It would kind of be a combination, um, just kind of people who are in the area. I mean, um, I've tried to pick pictures that are. Um, you don't necessarily know where they are. Um, so they're kind of ambiguous in that sense. Uh, it makes you want to, you know, maybe explore something you haven't seen in Brighton. Uh, so I think it would just kind of be like geographically Brighton, um, but not necessarily attracting people from, you know, Toronto and the bigger cities, um, if that if that makes sense. Um, yes. Yeah. Thank you. I think it's a great job. Thank you. That, that little mark, that little piece about the uh, the ramp being closed at the 401, it just probably maybe, maybe it should say the ramp's closed, but we're, Brighton's open. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't know how long that how long is that ramp going on for? I I, I think just till Friday. I think this week. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's not a big deal as far as long long term. I guess when they do that highway, it'll be a, a whole another story. But. Right. I also had a question for Caroline, um, kind of run, runs along what Libby was just asking. Um, when you say we've had so much more engagement on both Facebook, Instagram, and whatever, do we, do we know where those interests come from? Uh, is, it, is it local people uh, signing up, signing on, engaging? Or are we, um, like I said, meeting a wider umbrella of uh, folks looking at? looking at our, our social pages now. So um, from what I've looked at on both of our accounts, the majority of people who are engaging with the content are locals, um, but where they're sharing that, they are obviously reaching their own audience. So I don't know where they necessarily see it, um, but the majority has been local except for that ramp thing, which went like all over the place. Like I think people in Kingston were sharing it. So um, that one got really widespread, but for the most part, we're pretty, local um but some periphery in terms of who's sharing what and who's engaging with what thank you it's sort of i equate facebook to you know like like my wife went to brock so she's got all sorts of friends in the niagara region so if she's if she shares something from municipality of brighton all of those folks in the niagara region are all of a sudden seeing it um it's just a really simplistic example of how that can kind of, you know, get moving before you really realize it. Okay. Well, great, Megan. And Ben, do you, if you want to go ahead with your uh, yeah. days, we jump back to this if we have time. And, cause it's, uh, and you've got some other signage stuff you're working on too. So, uh, yeah. and I have a question, where's the print mostly being done? Who are we dealing with? for print like signage and i i try to keep it specifically to willow um as long as we're under our three quote threshold then i uh then i do have to take it for uh for uh the three quotes and uh operate mm -hmm. uh, as in according to our our bylaws but uh but yeah you know we're keeping i think willow is our only print shop so why wouldn't we just use them and I've got a great relationship with uh, Dan and they do great work and they're fast and um, it's gone really well. No, I think it's great. I think I'm glad we're dealing with definitely locally and I'm, and I know, and Willow, you, you can't go wrong with them too. So, and they got a new machine, so. All right, 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 right. <laughs> All right. Some funding for that, yeah. You did it? <laughs> um, okay, man. Yeah, I'll just start off by saying it's amazing what an extra set of hands can do and how much we can catch up on. Caroline's uh, working on a couple projects. I think some of people in this meeting might have already heard from her about a couple things she's working on uh, for down the road content that we're gonna that we're gonna play uh, later on 
in the year, even when Caroline might not even be here. So, um, so very, very huge to have that extra set of hands to compile content for different times of the year. Um, as we touched on, Mike has resigned. Um, so we will be uh, going into a closed session council and reopening the appointments from the batch of applicants we had uh, first time around. Um, so I, I, my goal is to get that on the agenda at the June 21st council meeting. Um, and at that time, we will be able to also appoint our rural agricultural rep as well. So uh, council will have uh, so council will have those two items on the agenda June 21st, hopefully. Um, so first impressions community exchange program. Um, I know Trevor talked to us about it um, in the early spring about an opportunity with, uh, with uh, a community up around Buckhorn. And that kind of didn't, uh, didn't work out as I would hope, but Trevor kept our name in the, uh, in the fire and Napanee, we ended up being matched with Napanee. So I ended up having a introductory meeting with them and Omafra yesterday to get the conversation started. I think this is a really cool opportunity because um, Napanee is a similar size to Brighton. It's not too far. It's easily, easily done in a day. I have all sorts of contacts there. Um, and they really want um, they really want this done to their community. They haven't had it done since 2013, which I was actually a part of when we did an exchange with Hawkesbury. But uh, yeah, so so they're really excited to be matched with us. Um, kind of the the timeline um, I'm working on is uh, Napani would like to is is looking at getting a group to come here, kind of throughout the first two weeks of August. We really feel that uh, restrictions will be fairly open. People will be able to go for lunch. People will be able to explore retail. People will be able to um, maybe do other things, go to the park. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what they'll have in mind, but, um, and then same goes for us. If we wanna pinpoint that first two weeks in August to really, uh, to, to make our visit there, um, I, think th I think that would be a really good timeline. Um, some things we've done in different communities that I've worked on this program with is kind of a role play exercise. So, you know, if Ron wanted to go into the community as if he was looking to start a, a business and take it from that approach. And then, and then Megan went to the community uh, because she got a brand new job in, at, in Kingston and she's gonna use Napanee as her, as her place to raise her family. Um, she can go into it from that kind of approach. So. Um, just a few, like a, just a few different ideas there, um, to kind of make, um, make the idea a little bit more fulsome and, and our, and our findings a little bit more, um, lifelike for, for Napanee. So, uh, just, a, just a few, few, uh, conversations that, that we had yesterday. Um, <clears throat> we're going to do a full community profile. So we're not just going to do a tourism. We're not just going to do a downtown we're going to do a full community. So we want them exploring all parts of the community. We, you know, if they can get into the rural, uh, if they can get out uh, to Presque Isle, if they can get into our other business parks, um, we want them doing that. If they can explore residential, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's the, uh, that's the idea there. Um, yeah. I, I, I think it's, I think it's a really good program and we're going to get a lot of like, a lot out of it and I think there could be a lot of like quick wins come of it for this community for this committee specifically um, to get off the ground um, the DBIA and the municipality and the Bay Quinney Regional Marketing Board have been up to some really cool conversations around videography and photography to really increase content um, the Bay Quinney Mar Regional Marketing Board did a spring marketing grant intake and the DBIA was uh, successful in uh, acquiring some funds uh, for a video slash photography uh, project. And then I, I am throwing uh, uh, some money on that from my promotions budget as well. And uh, there's also another $1,000 uh, from 
uh, Bay Queen Regional Marketing Board that they are looking at giving every partnering DBIA slash municipalities DBIA um, to help them with marketing. So there's all of a sudden a really good pot of funding for the DBIA um, in partnership with municipality and Bay Queen Regional Marketing Board to, uh, to really up the ante when it comes to video and photo content. So we're working on that throughout the summer. Um, Canada Day, the Canada Day Committee, um, obviously we can't have an event uh, of any sub substantial uh, volume. So we are, we are going <coughs> virtual. Um, we've got some stuff online. We're gonna start promoting it next week. And uh, we've got a bunch of different activities going on at the library that we're promoting for kids of all ages. Um, we've got a, a home business decorating contest, uh, community spirit initiative that the, um, that the committee, that the events committee is kind of organizing through myself and Caroline. And then uh, Caroline has another little uh, fun little thing we're doing with, uh, with some community involvement as well. Um, that's going to be, uh, I don't know, I guess could be embarrassing for some people, but it could be a lot of fun too. Uh, so you'll see that on social media as well around Canada Day. Um, so we're doing everything we can to offer Canada Day celebrations for everyone, um, even though virtual, hopefully the last year of it. Um, the Casey's Lane grant was achieved. Uh, so if, if all of you are familiar with Casey's Lane, it is out uh, on, uh, on Main Street in between the dental center and the uh, uh, dollar store, I believe. So it's a little bit tired looking. Um, we've, got, we've received a grant to add some garbage receptacles, some lighting, uh, some plant, planters, uh, and just to overall revitalize that, that area and make it a little more welcoming <coughs> for visitors and pedestrians through the, through the downtown. I know there's uh, some locates being waited on to begin construction, but now that we've received the funding, uh, I'm confident the, uh, that will start uh, sometime in June, early June here. So that'll be really exciting. Um, the Brownfield CIP slash downtown CIP slash affordable housing CIP has been moved over to, the, to our planning department to take on. The planning department has uh, expanded uh, we have now an approvals uh, approvals planner. We now have a uh, we now have a I'm not sure his full title, but a, an actual other planner on board. And uh, there's someone else being hired as well. So we all of a sudden have a planning team that can actually fill their expertise into this CIP and use me as a uh, and use me as a resource. Um, from an economic development perspective. So what I've told Paul Walsh is we will get, uh, we will get him or his team to come into a, a meeting bef uh, before it goes to council and just get them to kind of go over what they had in mind in the report and how this uh, CIP will look. And then we can be used as a uh, advisory level kind of uh, sounding board and, and, and they can use myself uh, as a liaison to the business community as well. So that's kind of operationally where the, that's gone. I uh, just found out about that this week that we're, that we're, that we're taking it in, in this direction. Um, the industrial sign, industrial park sign, which I circulated to everyone uh, has been solidified. Um, it has been moved into the production um, uh, stage with Willow. So uh, it's gonna be two-sided sign. We're gonna get some sort of form of solar lighting to shine on it for when it gets dark um, and we kept it all within budget and we think we think we've got everyone's business included we've got room for interpretation if someone leaves um, or someone joins um, and we think it'll offer a uh, much needed boost of exposure to that business park and that industrial park to all those businesses in there that uh that are offering really good services. So um, that'll sit at the corner of Loyalist Drive and Prince Edward Street and uh, working with Alan, uh, our bylaw officer on where exactly it can sit in terms of traffic and all those, and all those things, but uh, we're well on our way there. So those are just uh, 
handful of handful of things from my end um, that I'm working on as well. So lots going on in the economic development and communications department. It's taken a whole other life of its own in the last, well, I'd say since, you know, the new year. And uh, it's, it's, it's crazy how, how much we're, we're, we're working on and getting done. Um, so it's, it's really fun to see. And, and it couldn't happen without really quality partners and this committee. So appreciate everyone's, uh, what everyone's done so far. Great, Ben. Good presentation on both of you. Um, I, have a, I have a question. Um, we've covered everything. You've got everything covered yeah, as far as uh, shop local and uh, uh, signs and uh, multimedia, but we haven't talked about as we come out of this, there's going to be a lot of new business possibly wanting to come to our area or, or to the area. And are we have any plan to maybe through your social media, whatever, to start hinting about do time to set up business in Brighton. Uh, we've got some things, uh, you know, hovering around us. We have a new building center. We have things like that that we can uh, talk about. Uh, those are all positive things as far as growth in the in the community. But now we're on a little bit of a roll. I have that feeling. It's a feeling I have, and, you know, and, the, and the feeling I also have is how this committee and how you guys have actually really, I can see things moving and, and DBIA is moving and chambers moving and everybody, everything's moving, but we're, 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 we don't want to miss the boat on any opportunities. The, the downtown uh, area is a, a focus that we need to keep our, you know, there's some couple of new businesses that come in and some uh, upgrades and changes, but we need to keep focusing on it. And, and I'm going to just ask, that we lost another gas station. That's a talk of town. We don't want to see another one, in my opinion. But uh, at least, but people are talking about that corner, and so these are the things that we need to keep on working at to uh, beautify Brighton and and to keep and and to stay on top of. You talk about going to Napa and Ian, seeing what they're doing, but we know what they're doing and what they've done, and and we'll probably have our eyes open when we see a little closer to. Uh, getting right in there and see what they're doing and, and that might bring us to to do a couple of things and there's nothing wrong with that and then you hear about quinny west by paying sixty thousand dollars for a, a, a quinny west sign that's lit up like the belleville sign i don't think we need to spend sixty thousand i'd rather spend sixty thousand to, to do other things to get other business to come here and things like that signage is important but but, you know, you look around and you say, hey, we're moving right along, but we need, I think we need to continue to move ahead. Uh, and uh, you've done it, and I'm not uh, trying to dump more on you, but if there was just some way of thinking about what are we doing to grab some business, and it's a perfect time for business to come to Brighton. Uh, we're, we're short on, we're lacking different, I'm not going to rattle off names, because, but uh, services and, and uh, uh, things that people like, you know, and even more dining, you know, we have lots, we, there's dining, but there's room for some more dining and things like that. So uh, the other thing is, where are you going to put these things? <laughs> we have brownfields all over the place, but, but we need to, we need to be thinking about that and, and offering up something too. And the West End's building up, and everything's starting to, to come. So, what do you think about that? It's something about something about business, uh, starting up business, or improvements on, you know? Yeah, yeah, I agree with everything you're saying, Ron. Um, the, the inquiries into the industrial park are in, in, insane. Um, yeah. We've got we've got three businesses as we speak going through site plan approval. Um, I've got one really big deal in, uh, in the, um, stages of sort of law firm to law firm and going over that agreement. Um, I've got a really promising meeting later today. Um, so out there, yeah, things are moving, um, for sure. And you're going to see some buildings being built, you know, potentially this summer out there 
uh, it is about a two year kind of sales cycle out there. So we're, we're kind of closing in on two years for me in the, in the fall. So stuff that, uh, stuff that I kind of started with, I'm starting to see the fruits of those labor of that labor. Um, I know what you're saying. The gas station, the brownfield on the other side of the road, the pharmacy is not there anymore. That's a main artery into the downtown and there's not a lot going on there and it doesn't look very attractive. I, 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 I walk the community every single day. Uh, I walk four kilometers a day at lunch every single day. I've been doing it since Christmas and that is an eyesore. It, I walk by it every single day. I drive by it every single day. I know I don't live here, but uh, it bothers me just as much as it bothers every resident that has to drive by and walk by it every single day. And it's owned by someone else. It's owned by a corporation. We push and we prod. And I call the real estate agent every couple of weeks to see what's going on. And I don't know what else to do on, on that one other than push, prod, be annoying, and try to find out as many secrets as I can to report back to uh, Bob and yourselves. And uh, to be honest, there's nothing, I, I don't have anything to tell you other than that they don't really want us landscaping it to make it look better. And they not really telling us if they've got any sales lined up. The other side of the road, the current gas station, um, I, I don't know what the plan is there. I'm assuming it's going to become another brownfield and it's going to be part of the brownfield CIP. Um, somebody, uh, somebody, the owner was puttering around there. He's been there the last couple of weeks. The owner who, who owns the building connected to mine also owns that gas station. And he's been here um, quite a bit over the last few weeks um because he's rarely ever here um so it's notable when he is here um but it looks like they're surveying the land like they had a couple like it looks like like measurement canada type people come out and like check it out um well i don't know what any of that means it might just be another gas station <laughs> right um so I'm sorry i don't have more insight or more detail or more of a plan on those two properties right now um but i think the cip will offer at least developers an option to 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 look at it to see some um to see some options that you know might not have been there before and you're gonna you're gonna have an option to uh develop lands and maybe get some some either some rebate or it's not going to be as ex expensive as it sh you know could have been so We'll see where that goes. Um, but yeah, I agree. Promoting that we're open for business, we're open for new businesses to come here is definitely that next stage coming out of out of COVID for sure. I have a couple questions, Ben, about the two things. One is the CIPs. You said it's um, uh, taken over by Public Works. Planning. So, or, okay, so they're planning it. So what does that entail? Um, a CIP is really all policy and sometimes your official plan has to be amended for it to fit. So it just made a little bit more sense to use me as more of a consultant to the business mm -hmm. community and have them write the policy as, as planners and have that, that insight. Um, so the policy will be kind of like what, what is like planned moving forward to like be done with these brownfields? Yeah. So they'll write the whole program. Okay. And kind of you like, you know, are we rebating building permits? Are we rebating uh, are th an, env an environmental assessment phase two? Okay. Uh, that kind of thing is okay. what they're going to be. And then, you know, from the affordable housing side, they're going to uh, look at different properties that could be developed into affor affordable housing and mm -hmm. how developers can be uh, rebated on those costs to develop yeah. affordable housing in our community. Yeah, I guess because my interest was um, just you know, as far as like local input goes, like obviously not every town's person is going to give their input, but that's kind of like, you know, especially with the Brownfield right here in downtown, obviously yeah. that concerns the DBIA's interest, whatever it becomes, they're going to want it to be, we're going to want it to be something that benefits. Them. Yeah. So yeah, it's, just, it's, just a sh it's just a shift in who's leading the project. Okay. There's still going to, there's still going to be public consultation opportunities and, um, this committee is still going to be part of having a, having feedback. Okay, cool. And uh, the last question I had was you were talking great that we've been matched with Napanee. I think that's super exciting. 
especially because um, all the things you've told us about Napanee and their growth like that is just uh, really cool. And I'm hoping that we can have a similar um, thing. Uh, how do we go about, do we as the committee select people to go for FICE or do for the, for the exchange or do we go or? Oh yeah. Sorry. I should have made that a little more clear. It was my expectation that this committee would take that project on. So and we're going to kind of exchange with a similar committee with them. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Libby, did you have a question? Yeah, I do. I have a couple of questions. So I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I'd like your, uh, your thoughts on uh, on targeted recruitment, uh, Ron. And I think that after things settle down, things get open again and businesses feel that you know, they're not in the same kind of danger that they have been in uh, or vulnerability, I suppose, within the last year or more, um, that maybe we could then do some targeted uh, recruitment of businesses where we see uh, voids in the business community in, in Brighton. Maybe that's something we could take on um, later in the year once, once things are back on and even keel and businesses feel um, more secure in their business and the future. Uh, but I think also, as you said, it's important to keep it front and center that we are open for business and, you know, to have like some sort of package or something ready for people that come in and say, maybe that could be done with the chamber as well, um, to let people know that, yeah, here's some material, this is our, you know, this is our map, this is where our industrial park is, this is where our commercial areas are, and here's our tax rates and, you know, just things like that, so that we always look like we are uh, ready for business. So I, I, I'd like to, you know, pursue that. I think it's very important that we continue to um, pursue new business as well as nurture the ones that we have. Um, the second thing now that we're talking about, and I'm sort of off it again, but, but I did mention this to Ben the other day as well, and I appreciate his frustration with that, that corner that we're all talking about. Is there anything from a municipal perspective that we might be able to do just to you know, beautify it somehow with the same kind of flower pots that are in the downtown. Is there anything we can do to make that entrance a little bit more appealing uh, than, than what it is right now? Because it certainly doesn't give a, um, an impression of a progressive pretty municipality, which it is um, to anybody using that entrance. And I would imagine that's probably our busiest entrance to the municipality. Um, so that's just a, a question that I'll pose now rather than in, in new business. Well, I'd let, let uh, Ben or the mayor answer some of those questions. <laughs> I don't know if they've even cut, I don't even know if they've cut the uh, grass or the weeds there. Not this week. I can no. just, a, <clears throat> just a quick chime in if I can. Uh, I reached out to Circle K a couple of years ago. Um, it was one of the first things I did uh, after I took office at, at, in, the, in the mayor's office. And we were on a path to uh, have that um, uh, property improved a little bit, uh, get some benches in there and some flower pots and things were going along at a, at a nice pace, uh, thinking things were gonna happen. And then the, the um, corporation, um, the, the Imperial Oil, whatever it's called, Real Estate Development Corporation or whatever <laughs> whatever the group is with Circle K that owns that and operates it for real estate purposes, said, hold off, we've got a buyer. So uh, so we said, perfect, uh, we'd rather have it developed for, and you know, get the, uh, get the tax base in there, that'd be great. Uh, and then I guess that fell through. So we started the conversations again, early March of 2020, we started those conversations again. And of course we got, we got COVIDed. So they said, we're not doing anything uh, back off Brighton and just recently we asked staff to go back to them and and ask those questions but my understanding and Ben you can maybe chime in as well my understanding is they've they've said we don't we're, we don't want to do this we just want to sell it so uh, I think they're worried that we're going to improve it and then they're going to sell it we're going to have to take everything down so do you have any further information on on latest steps Ben? That's uh, exactly what they told uh, Jim Miller um, precisely. They don't want to see a bunch of money gone into making the pro property and beautified and then all of a sudden it go to waste because they've sold it. And, um, yeah, they've, they've, they've kept us on the hook telling us there's pending sales pretty much every time Jim or I reaches out. I'm 
I'm sorry. That is so infuriating. Was, like, isn't it up for us to decide how we beautify our town? Like, if it's our money, why do they care? We don't own like, their property. So we own. I get that. But, like, if you're worried about, you know, us yeah. investing this money to beautify our a portion of our town, which they are in, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, a really it, important part, it kind of just, it sounds a little bit like letting themselves off the hook, sort of. I think it's an excuse. I think it's an excuse. Yes, that's infuriating to me. I'm sorry. That aggravates me. I thought the understanding always was when we initially started this conversation with uh, Circle K or whoever, that was exactly what it was. We understood that. I know dealing with DBIA a couple of years ago, dealing with just some private citizens who have reached out, it was the same thing. It's okay if they want to sell it. We would hmm. load up our stuff and move it off. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I thought that was always part of the conversation when we uh, initially started it. <laughs> well, and wouldn't it like do better for a sale if the lot looks nice and usable? Like, yeah. I just, that just blows me away. Yeah. So beep, that, beep, beep, beep. that might be true. I think the other side of that coin is a, a p- potential buyer might see it as the municipality having an interest in the property, and that scares private investors off sometimes. So uh, it can be, you know, we've, we've all experienced or we've all heard of the story where the municipality shows an interest in something and then so it kind of stu- kind of stifles the ability of the developer, to, a new developer, to come in and, and make some changes. So there may be those concerns, and no doubt Circle K has had these dealings across the country, not just Brighton, and maybe gun shy, uh, allowing a local government uh, access to the property. And I can understand that too. So um, uh, you know, I, I would ask staff. I guess I'd ask staff to not to stop asking all the questions, mm-hmm. like. A, when are you going to sell the damn thing so we can get something built yeah. on it? And B, uh, you know, wh- why can't we just put a couple picnic tables on it and run our lawnmower over it a couple of <laughs> times a month? Yeah. Um, and and um, having had this conversation, I'll reach out to the person I was in touch with uh, there a year and a half or two years ago and um, see if they're allowed to talk to me. I would, I will bet I get ghosted, but we'll see what happens. Like, I'm just thinking about if there were picnic tables, then you get restaurants that, uh, you know, haven't had outdoor seating that are about to open up for outdoor seating, where people can actually get takeout, like China King, for goodness sake, right? Like, those poor owners, you know, the people have to just like, b- come buy their food and leave, they have no patio, like if there was just somewhere for like, something for the community to use. And at that point, I don't know, is there like a way that we can, I, I know that you guys have said that you've asked all the questions and like put pressure on them and stuff and nothing's happening, but there has to be like some kind of repercussion for just like leaving a property in basically disarray and uh, filth, essentially. Megan, this happens in all kinds of municipalities and there's some near us wow. that look yeah. to the Look to the east of us. There's some properties downtown uh, that look, they've made them look like they're occupying something going on, but it's just a big board across the uh, the empty space. And there's lots and there's former grocery stores that are, they're empty for what, 20 years now. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's car washes that are empty. There's yeah. hotels oh, are the, are the really, and I drove, ones. I drove, I drove to, uh, the other side of Belleville yesterday, and, the, and there are a number of gas stations that are closed down along number two. Even there's, you're starting to see yeah. and there's not there's going to be fewer gas stations. Yeah. It's <laughs> so just sad. I find it just really sad, and that's like the issue, I guess. The dichotomy between small town living and a giant corporation is like they really do not care about like these are, are, aren't local owners you want to deal with a local owner yeah i know it's it's, different... it's just really disappointing you know you know it's true but yeah. when you see it it sucks yeah. on a brighter note um <laughs> we, we, we did have we did have park staff trim up those uh that those hedges the other day it looks a little better a lot better really good credit to them um and then as well in front of the old pharmacy uh, some flowers have been planted this week and uh, that should spruce up that corner a touch. So we, we are trying. Uh, we are doing what we can. I, I can tell you that. Mm-hmm. Appreciate well, it. I think it's just something we need. You know, I, 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 it, it sounds repetitious, but it, 
if some people aren't pushing and then this group's going to be pushing as long as uh, we're around, I'm sure. Uh, Should we like start a petition or something? Is that like a possibility? <laughs> Megan, you might be able to start one. <laughs> right. Why me? <laughs> I don't think, yeah, I don't but mean, it, it is it is discouraging because, like you say, we have we have the local community who really wants to help out, and yeah. uh, these folks for for wherever when they live, uh, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. I mean, at least last year they kept the grass cut. Um, yeah. I mean, it didn't look great, but the grass was cut, and now the grass isn't even cut. And I'm sure these big corporations can throw a few bucks at at least getting that done. Um, it, it is disheartening because Brian, as you said, this is this isn't just this last year. This has been going on for a few years that we have all uh, tried to kind of do something with that, and we just kind of keep hitting the wall. But um, yeah, Megan, maybe we put up signs. Yeah, yeah, just like wouldn't it be cool if this was uh, seating, outdoor seating, <laughs> just a big sign <laughs> with an arrow. Or maybe we do it and we risk getting charged with trespassing. Uh, yeah. I know. Go let, hard, no, hard no, hard no, hard yeah. <laughs> no. I, I, I know. Say, I know. It's like, only a it's, comment. Yeah. It right. I'm not being I'm going to reel it back in. I think uh, we're all on the same page for that one. So you can but, make a note of that. But could um, you, but could you put, I, I, it's a legitimate question though. Could you feasibly like, not you, but like in general, could somebody put together some kind of petition, get signatures and just be like, hey, look, here's the overwhelming response. You really like kind of can't ignore that people think, you know, you should do this. Tom, Tom's got a suggestion. Well, I just wanted to make a note that um, like property standards is a complaint driven process. Um, so there is a process in place uh, for such a thing. I don't know for sure how much weight um like a petition like a, a bunch of signatures would add to something that like that process um but you are definitely you can make a complaint to our property standards uh our bylaw officer okay so like we would complain to mcgee then about the way that looks and he would take it to them like he yeah there's the there's a form i believe yeah. megan tom okay. can probably send you that or something. okay Maybe there I'll just is, get the whole is, town to sign the form. <laughs> I, well, you being you being the neighbor property owner could carry some pretty high weight. Yeah, I would like that form. I'll get I'll get more people to fill it out because I think I'm not the only one. Um, well, so yeah, if you could send that, Tom, at, or or can I Google it? Um, I think it might be online, but I'll, I'll send you either a link or, or the form itself. You can find it online, Megan. Yeah. Okay. On the municipal website. Okay. They may be a company that says we've never received a complaint. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, let's move along with, uh, was there going to be anything from the DBA, D DBIA? Did you? Anyone yeah. Did you so there were, um, there were some housekeeping things. Um, we did a lot of housekeeping. Um, ultimately, we uh, the main kind of uh, point of discussion was similar to what Ben uh, reported in his committee report, where we talked about the um, marketing grant for the through the Bay of Quinney, um, which was really exciting to talk about. So yeah, we've got this money now to um, basically do a digital video marketing for the DBIA and the downtown businesses. So we talked a lot about kind of what that will look like. Uh, we decided to form like a subcommittee of uh, DBIA um, executive members um, to essentially talk about what the video is gonna be about because nobody, it was so early, right? None of us really knew what it was gonna look like. So the subcommittee is, uh, Ashley, Wayne, Dwayne, and Bobby, I believe. I don't think I forgot anybody. Um, we talked a little bit about- I think the, uh, me, Megan. Oh, did you, Emily? I didn't realize. Yeah, I think okay, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna add that here. Um, so yeah, so that's gonna be um, not necessarily something we discuss at meetings, but something that that subcommittee is going to be discussing um, independently. Um, 
talked a little bit about uh, Brian Todd's hanging their banners. We provided the hardware for it. Um, the, you guys remember the art banners last year um, with the kids art, really lovely project. Um, yeah, uh, we've updated our members list. Uh, Ashley is drafting up an AGM membership letter. We did talk a little bit about what the plans are moving forward for an AGM because we need to have one. Um, just, you know, it's COVID and I think the members want to do it in person, but, you know, it could still be till fall and then we're almost two years since our AGM. So we'll see. Um, we did give out a welcome package. There are new business owners at Lovems. I don't know if anybody noticed that. Um, Jay and Fanny, they're really nice people. So we gave them a little welcome package. And yeah, like I said, a lot of housekeeping. Laura is retiring. Mostly just kind of uh, rapid. Oh, ra Bobby brought up that rapid testing is available for businesses. And we pretty much... I think unanimously decided that uh, logistically it would kind of be a waste of time for a lot of our small businesses because most of us only have one or two employees and what you have to, you have to like have like a representative come in and like basically for each business come in and um, supervise. I think that's through, like, the, through the Quinny West chamber. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. So we had the option and I don't, think we're gonna go with it or a lot of us aren't I I don't know if we're maybe gonna decide to bring it forward but again it kind of feels like the end is in sight at this point and most people are vaccinated so uh, rapid testing probably not gonna be a thing that we are gonna offer um, yeah uh, pretty much most of what we discussed was in Ben's uh, municipality report um, there is a really big concern uh, with the vacant shops downtown, which we kind of touched upon today, but again, there's no real clear answers, I think, as to like, we don't really have any answers as to how to remedy that. Um, yep. I don't really know what else to say about the vacant shops. So uh, can I ask a question while you're doing this? Um, and do we have a list of those shops that are empty or even potentially empty? Yeah, I could so, tell you right now. It's no, the old... no, I, don't, I don't think that's fair because uh, we're a little bit uh, to to them or to anyone at the moment. But if if Ben had that list uh, and it's not only that, uh, who owns those buildings and who who's marketing those buildings? Yeah, well, two. Two of them are owned by a, a real estate corporation. Um, I know that for a fact because they're right next to each other. It's the Blossoms and the old Mrs. B's and they've been up for rent for so long. But it, if something that we could look at or mm -hmm. at least Ben can have a deeper look at it uh, to see if there's any anything that anybody can do to assist in that. Like if we're not real estate people, we're not... Uh, yeah. But we certainly are promoters and we're certainly uh, can give suggestion and stimulate people sometimes, except gas companies. Yeah. <laughs> but anyhow, if uh, and that bit might be a, a way to look at it to see which ones rather than just say we've got them a bunch of them. I'd like to know maybe who they are and what we can do to to, to assist and fill in yeah. what potential I mean, those spaces might have too. Mm -hmm. It's certainly frustrating. I understand that vacancies do not look good. Um, there was, you know, uh, the restaurant beside, in your block there, Megan has now opened. They're offering yeah. takeout. So that you know, was part of new business as well. We just haven't dropped off a package to them yet. Uh, I reached out to them and we had a decent chat and uh, haven't got around to ordering takeout for lunch yet, but I will soon. And uh seem like they're really, uh, really uh, enthusiastic about being successful there. And then, um, and then the pottery business as well, mm -hmm. opening up during tough times with COVID. Yeah, I think, I think as much as the vacancies are frustrating us, there has been some openings. Yep, there have been. And I mean, is, like, which is quite interesting in itself. It, it also begs the question too, like, we can't just on the DBIA kind of be like, well, what are we going to do about this? Like we all need to put up ideas, 
So that is kind of me also putting it out there. If anybody has any ideas for even just a way we can like beautify mm -hmm. those empty lots while we're waiting or again, tantalize people. Like I think that um, I'd be open to like even putting that before the, the DBIA and just saying like, hey, does anybody have any ideas, you know? we can't just kind of keep waiting for something to happen because yeah like you said ben even though things have been opening it's still covid yeah. and you know and i know uh down further down the street uh sort of beside the real estate uh, the real estate office there is a vacancy but there is a application in the window for yes so that was also uh, talked about at the dbia meeting i don't really want to talk too much about it because I feel like it's a polarizing topic sure. um but it would be really nice to see that space filled with literally almost anything <laughs> well, that, 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 that was the point I was sort of alluding to is that uh it's in the application I think public consultation um uh process right now with the uh with the Ontario alcohol cannabis whatever yeah. And uh, even though it might not be whatever everybody wants in there, at least there's a plan. There's interest in that. There's interest in that uh, space. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like that's one right there that there's there's wheels turning on. So we can't really sit here and say like there's nothing going on. No, absolutely. Right? You know, so that's sort of the point I was trying to make. But yeah. I, I, do, I, do, I do get frustrated. It'd be nice to see Dragonfly filled ASAP. Yep. It'd be nice to see Mrs. B's filled ASAP blossoms. I, I get it. I get it. Yep. No, I, I just thought I'd bring it up. I'd just bring it up because it was talked about. Can I ask you a question on that, Ben, mm -hmm. Re regarding the Main Street uh, interest at some point? Is that something that uh, the, municipal the municipality will be involved in, or is it because it's uh, higher up levels of government? We really don't have... Um, I don't want to say we don't have any say as far as, you know, we're not going to shut down business, but um, is there, is there <clears throat> anything that the municipality does um, uh, to kind of keep an eye on those kind of things or do we have, yeah. The, the cannabis retail specifically? Yeah. yeah. So it would have been before I started, council would have been asked to, uh, if you were interested or not, I forget the, Mayor Ostrander could help me with the actual uh, opt in or opt out. Opt in right? or opt out. Opt in, so, opt out. Yeah. And, first, uh, one of the first things this council did was opt in. And yeah. uh, Brighton opted in, as pretty much every uh, community in Ontario did. So at this point, no, uh, I don't think I don't think you can do much uh, as long as they're keeping uh, X amount of yards or meters from the schools and the different different rules that go along with it, which I know that that place is. So. Uh, I think yeah. our concern. I think our concern was more about the production and where production takes place, the sale of it at the retail end of it. That was something that can be dealt with, and in a, you know, like you said, on the location, and we can have the control over that. But production nope. and where they're nope. doing that was nope, nope, no? nope. The opt-in, opt-out was entirely retail. Brighton opted in, and the the group that come in have to work within the provincial mandate. Brighton does not get to choose where these operations go any more than we would get to choose where a clothing store gets to go. Uh, at, the, at the end of the, the day, they have to be so many meters away from, 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 a, school, from a school or a childcare position. Uh, the whole production facility thing was dealt with through our land use planning policies, Ron, and it was a different subject matter altogether. No, that's so, what I was saying. Um, I'm I'm happy to make I, I happy to make comments at some point. Okay. Yeah, I was, that's where I was leading to was the production part of it. Was it was you couldn't just produce it anywhere in Brighton. No, it would be produced at a facility probably where they're getting it from is probably not even remotely close to Brighton. It's probably like in Smith's Falls or something like. Yeah, which would probably have Health Canada yeah. approval. Yeah, like it's already, I know, I understand people's hesitancy sometimes with these things, but like there's so many levels of policy and legislation at work here that like it's not like your local drug dealers like coming into the neighborhood to like 
pre predate on your children. <laughs> I think, uh, I think uh, it's probably pretty by the books and it's probably going to be, uh, you know, pretty rule heavy. And, you know, I don't think that it's going to be anything where it's going to bring like bad types into town, no more so than an LCBO would. <laughs> are you saying bad types go to the lcbo no, no. i'm saying but i am <laughs> saying that uh L having an lcbo in town you can make the argument that it promotes alcoholism absolutely i know i know what you're talking about yeah can i ask just one more question on that just megan kind of brought it up um the policing of that um because we hear a lot of not so nice stories about those kind of places as well in the area. Do we, we don't police it either then, right? It's all done provincially. From a bylaw perspective? Yeah. Yeah, or, I, would, I would say it falls under what any retail outlet for any subject matter falls into. If there's property standards concerns, I think our bylaw officer would have full autonomy to act accordingly. But for all other like, legal matters and on complaints of safety, I think yeah. that would be OPP, just yeah. like it would be for a clothing store or a shoe store or anything. Yeah, yeah. okay, thank you. Thank you, Brian, Ben. <clears throat> so with that, uh, Chamber of Commerce, we do not have a representative as far as getting a report. Um, and aside from that, there was new business that Libby wanted to talk to. Should we go right into that? Libby, you had something? No, the only thing that I wanted in, in new business was the, uh, the beautification of that corner that we've already talked about. So um, okay. I'm okay with that, yeah. All right, with that, uh, anyone else have anything they want to add today? Or does uh, the mayor have something you'd like to add? Uh, yeah, just very quickly, um, um, Councillor Anderson, thank you very much. Um, Good meeting everyone, thank you. Lots of great uh, input, Caroline, welcome on board. I, I know I've said that to you privately, but uh, now very publicly, welcome on board. Um, hope you are able to uh, set Ben on a good path because I know you're <laughs> probably only here for a short time, uh, but we appreciate your, your efforts uh, uh, and the efforts that you're gonna make. Um, very quickly and for the record, uh, because it was mentioned during uh, an update, I, I would declare a conflict of interest with regard to the Brighton Beacon as it's published by my employer, Miracle Incorporated. So I'll just throw that out there for the record. Um, and I just want to say, you know, everyone's doing a, a great job of doing what I'm about to, to say. I, I mean this from an economic development perspective, from a DBIA perspective, Chamber of Commerce and collectively uh, across the municipality and that's you know our responsibility is cre to create the conditions for development and, and and rentals and you know economic growth in the community you can't see me but i'm waving my hands around um so when we say you know it's, you know what are we going to do about rentals what are we going to do to to get people in these shops what are we going to do to sell that uh, gas station old gas station on the corner we're doing it we're doing we're doing everything we can. We're, we're celebrating the municipality. We're talking about uh, bringing people in. We're, we're creating uh, community improvement plans. We're doing all of those things that haven't been done in the past. Um, in the past, we looked at some of these properties and we scratched our heads and said, what are we going to do? And we talked about community improvement plans and we didn't do anything. We sort of crossed our hands across our, shoulder, our, our chest and um, that kind of attitude pervaded in Brighton. And I, I think it stopped people from coming here and investing in the community. And we're seeing the opposite of that now. Um, as we redevelop our economic development programs, as we, as we engage in our partnerships across the municipality and regionally, we're seeing the benefits of that. And frankly, much, much faster than I thought we would. So uh, good work, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Um, keep it up. Uh, I think that that property at the corner of, of uh, Prince Edward and Elizabeth will sell a good deal faster when our community has that eyes wide open um, and, you know, how are we going to get it done kind of attitude. Uh, as for what businesses come, whether it's marijuana being sold or gas station, new gas station across the street, 
Uh, Mr. Hagerman, if you hear of the business, a new business is opening, will you please let them know I'm happy to come regardless of what it is and cut their ribbon and give them a certificate and uh, shake their virtual hand for now until we can actually do that. Because we want to celebrate new businesses in this community, even if they're moderately controversial. Uh, that's okay. Um, and, you know, the, the, the gas station that Comron owns uh, is, is a gas station. And, and it's likely to be a gas station unless at some point uh, they close it up and, uh, and it becomes part of our CIP plan. So, um, you know, I, I get that, that some things aren't all that popular in our downtown. Well, that's okay. We can get over that too. Anyway, that's, that's my very brief comment for today. Uh, thanks, everyone. I do appreciate the work you're doing. Good. Thank you, uh, Mayor. All right, with that, we can uh, move to an adjournment as, unless anyone else wants to have a, the final say. And Emily wants to have the final well, say. Well, I don't want the final <laughs> say. No, no, no. But I do have a question because it was brought up uh, a little bit earlier by both Caroline and Ben regarding, um, let me just see, where's my notes? Uh, yeah. The DBI bait, the DBIA maps and your new maps that you're hoping to go into, like make a two-sided thing. Yeah, you you talked about two, there's three, just to let you know, there's three places. Um, those DBIA maps that we have, we need to update them. So wondering if, um, if you have, or if you will, or if you could reach out to uh, Ash Ashley, our uh, DBIA administrator. I'm not sure where along the road we are with that. Um, uh, as far as updating those maps, only because um, you know we don't want to we don't want to advertise empty stores on our maps. You know we're right. trying to keep what the maps looking positive. So uh, it might be worth reaching out to her and to see um, if how how far along we are with changing um, what's what's on them. Okay. okay. Um, how do you feel, Emily, before talking to the rest of your group? about us inserting just maybe for the summer or in, into like Thanksgiving weekend, even uh, one side of those signs being the graphic kind of shop local um, thing that we're going to do out at Presqu'il. My, myself, you know, I, I'm, I'm one of many on a board like everything else. So I think it should go to the DBIA. Okay. Um, but we, just to let you know that as well, we meet next week then. Mm -hmm. So, oh, perfect. um, maybe kick Ashley an email so that she can put it on her agenda. I know she's working on the agenda for next week. We just received draft minutes from our last meeting. Okay. So, um, I'll send a copy of the graphic design. So you have that to look at at the yeah, meeting we, as well. We got a lot of new businesses. So we want to make sure that they're on the map, right? That's right. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. We're, we're trying to create a positive map as well. Take off yeah. the, but we don't want to advertise empty stores if we can fill them. So yeah. I would suggest sending it over um, to Ashley Ben so our, our board can discuss it. We meet next Thursday. Okay, thank you. June 10th. Yeah, Very good. thank you. Okay, and uh, Chairperson, oh, Tom, you have something? Just wanted to make sure we are, we're on the same page for the next meeting. Is, is July 1st uh, what everyone's looking at? Or do you want to have a meeting in July, I guess? I wouldn't be pick July first. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's definitely that Canada. Be a it'd be a virtual <laughs> meeting. <laughs> uh, we don't there... want to pay our municipal staff time and a half and a half. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Could we go to, to June um, eighth? July. 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 Or we yeah. could go, yeah. I'd suggest we just bump it a week, eh, for for sake of. Uh, is that good with you too, Ben? Yeah, that's cool. perfect. Okay, so July 8th. Would you like me to set up a partner or a group to come and, and speak to us? That's something, you know, is relevant or do we want to continue just spitting out uh, all the work that we've been up to and talking about our local stuff? I, I, I'll just say, I like when you have somebody come and speak to us for Okay. You know, educational to us, and if it's something that's uh, of interest to all, all of us here, it'd be great. We won't be quite as heavy from Caroline and I next month. Uh, we had a lot to report on today, so 
I, I kind of think it's nice to have meetings like this every now and then so we can discuss, we can really, you know, fill the meeting with things that we're actually doing. And my opinion would be if, if we have a group or an individual or an agency or somebody that we're connected with um, that has something new to report or um, new that we can, you know, that we should learn about them, that's great. But just having somebody for the sake of having somebody, um, I, I, you know, would prefer that we, you know, stick to this style of meeting. Any other okay. comments on that? I agree with Libby. Yeah, I think we get a lot more accomplished when we yeah. when we do this. Yeah, and I want that petition or that that whatever you're doing there, Megan. Send me that link. The whatever I'm doing. Property yes, for the court and the property standards. Yeah. Oh so was, yes, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I trust me. I have like I'm a visual artist, so I look at it and I see so many things. Yeah. But obviously, I am not a policy writer or really a rule follower. Um, so <laughs> I uh, I uh, can't can't implement any of my ideas. <laughs> I like that. Thank, thank you, Ron, for, for taking this meeting today. Hopefully, I'll be able to see better at the next meeting and be able to read an agenda and so on. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, just to add, go back, go back to that, Ben. If you do get your hands on a, a, someone that has some good meat for us, uh, don't be afraid to invite them along. Though. I, I think that's it is for 10 minutes. Uh, it's really important to learn something, you know. If it's something that we've been talking about and and we just need a little more information, you've got that person in front of us. We can pick their brains for ten minutes or something. So, okay, yeah. I got a couple okay. ideas. All right, great. Okay, with that, I'll call for an adjournment at nine twenty-five. I guess it's roughly twenty-seven. And uh, thank you, everybody. It was a good meeting, and and uh, we'll just keep on moving on forward. So thanks a lot, and we'll see you July the 8th. Okay. Thanks, guys. Great.